I'm not proud to say this, but I have made a teacher cry. Hi guys, it's me, Stark Reality here, and I am here to tell you a story about how I made a teacher cry. But first, if you have not subscribed to the channel, if you have not liked every single video, if you have not clicked the bell to get notified on all of the content that's being put out here, stop the video now and make sure to do all of those things in that exact order if you have not done it already. Okay? Now, let's get to the story in which I, Stark Reality, one of the greatest artists, made a teacher cry. I was in high school at the time of this story. I must have been around 14 or 15. I know I wasn't seven. I know that for sure. I was in, yeah, 14 or 15 years old when this took place. So take that into consideration. I was a teenager. I was going through a lot of hormones. I was going through a lot of changes. I was changing peer groups. I was changing my interests in what I wanted to be. I was unsure of myself and I was unsure of others around me. It is a chaotic period of my life that I don't like to talk about all that often because it brings sadness. But Sadness is a part of life. Sadness is what makes happiness exist, because without sadness, you wouldn't have happiness. I, I, I know that a lot of us know that lesson already, but I love the film Inside Out. Inside Out by Pixar. That film really delved into the complex nature of sadness and happiness, that we need one. You can't have one without the other. Unfortunately, I did not bring my teacher happiness on this particular day of class. I remember it so vividly. It was a hot, hot day, and it wasn't even summer. This was spring, so it was hot. It was very sticky. My clothes were itching me. I was sweating profusely, as were many people. We had these terrible plastic chairs that you would just stick to as soon as your skin touched it. So I was very irritable, as was the teacher, as was the rest of the class. We were all in an absolute tizzy. Of course, it was only the middle of the day. I have not even had lunch yet at this point, so the end of the day was still very far in sight. I could not just get up out of class and walk home and paint until my heart's content like I would want to. I would have to abide by the rules of society and the rules of school. I would have to attend the classes, sit down and pretend like I'm absorbing information that I'm not at all interested in. I mean, seriously, who remembers any pieces of information from their high school geography classes? Not me. I'll be the first to admit it. I'll put my hand up. I don't remember anything about geography. All I know is I'm from Australia and that's in the Southern Hemisphere. And that's all I need to know. I don't know much about the equator, but they tried to teach it to me, but I don't remember anything about it. But ironically enough, this story isn't even about geography. <laughs> like most stories, none of them are about geography classes, except for, do you remember those 45 minutes of your life that in which you just zoned out completely? That must have been geography class. I don't even know why they still teach geography in high schools. Honestly, no one benefits from it. But that's that's a rant for another video, another day. This was a science class. And, of course, I don't meet the stereotypes of an artist. Most people would say artists and art people and creative artist people are not at all interested in mathematics or science, and vice versa. I completely reject this hypothesis. I was very much into science during high school. I was very actively involved in it. I found it very interesting and fascinating. I wanted to know how everything worked and why things the way they were. If anything, knowing about science helped me evolve as an artist to understand what what temperatures affected what kinds of paint and, and the molecules of paint. <laughs> so I completely reject the societal notion that artists are not at all capable of understanding science and scientists are unable to understand art. I, I, I hate that. It is, it is, it is superficial judgment upon people. It is marginalizing people. It is, it is, it is 
restrictive because I felt that as a child, my teacher, my science teacher, looked at me with a raised eyebrow and thought, an art class student in my science class? <laughs> this isn't going to go well. And that animosity, that bigotry that she felt about me really hindered my learning experience. That's the thing. Give every student a chance, and they will give you a chance. But she did not give me that. She looked at me with seething rage, saw somebody who had paint on their fingernails, and thought, whoa, this person isn't going to understand Einstein. Lady, I understood Einstein, and he was an interesting person and had interesting ideas. But, oh, oh, just because I also know who Jackson Pollock is doesn't mean anything to you, does it? It is. If anything, it means that, oh, oh, he understands what Jackson Pollock is and what his work's all about. That must mean he doesn't understand the theory of relativity. I do understand it, Miss Gengar. I do understand it. I'm sorry. I'm getting very flustered. I'm getting very frustrated and angry. This, this subject is still raw. It's still personal. It still hurts. But that does not excuse the actions that I took to make this teacher cry in front of the entire class. That is inexcusable. It is wrong for what I have done. And I'm going to tell you how I made this teacher cry and why it was wrong and what I learned from this experience, okay? So I was in my class, hot day, sticky, miserable, science teacher does not want me there. I want to be there, but I also don't want to be there because they really don't like me. They don't even want to call me Stark Reality. They want to call me by some other name that's on my birth certificate or on the glass roll. Ugh, so disrespectful. So I was sitting there minding my own business and this was in the age before we had laptops and smart devices in class. This was before the age of smart boards. This was in the good old age of having a whiteboard or a blackboard. I would rather not try to classify them by colours. I would just call them boards. But this is what we as a society have named them. Whiteboards and blackboards. I don't see colour. I just see boards. So my teacher, Miss Ganga was writing on this blackboard, and she was writing a whole plethora of words, and we as students are expected to write along with her in our own notebooks to never look at these notes ever again. It's only there to make sure that our wrists cramp up at least once a day. So that's what that was there for. I, I know teachers watching this will say, no, it's there for you to have a muscle memory and memorization of the stuff that you're writing down. And yes, even if you don't look at the piece of paper again, you will have some memory because you wrote it down. I don't buy that. It did not benefit me as a student. All it did was give me wrist cramps, which was not beneficial to my lifelong goal of being an artist. Sorry for the abrupt cut and change in attire. I had to stop recording the video for a quick moment and fill myself up with some nourishment. I was absolutely famished while talking about how I made my teacher in high school cry. So I stopped recording, I got up, I went down the road to a nice Chinese restaurant, and I ordered myself some Szechuan chicken, and ah, uh, it hit the spot beautifully. If you are not a uh, a Szechuan chicken person, then I don't even know how to associate with you. Unless, of course, you, you don't eat it for dietary reasons, like that you are a vegetarian or, or vegan, or you have an intolerance to Szechuan sauce, then I completely understand. But that, uh, you know, that's that. I, I, I had the food, I had lunch, and now I'm back. And I and I decided I'd put on my, my Doctor Who robe because it is a little chilly at the moment, so I thought I'd warm myself up. Where were we in the story? It was spring, but it was hot. Ganga, Miss Ganga, the science teacher, did not like me because I'm a free artist type. She was writing on the blackboard. That's it. We're up to the blackboard part of the story. So she was writing on the blackboard. We're having to copy it down for no real apparent reason. Like I said, it only hurts my wrist. And what's the point of doing that? It's actually restricting me as a person, as an, as an artist. But let's write down this unnecessary information that you're writing on the blackboard, shall we? Yeah, let's just do that. And then the moment 
happened. She finished writing, and she stood in front of the blackboard and told us all to make sure that we write every single word down. Do not miss it. Write it all down. This is important. This is going to be on the test. She gave me a look, this teacher, Miss Ganga, gave me a look and said, you have to do this. And I don't know why that look of condescension sent me red hot with rage. So I looked her dead in the eyes and said to her, I said to her something that I shouldn't have. I was... I said something to her I shouldn't have and I deeply regret, but I looked her in the eyes and said, Well, miss, you've got to get out of the way because I can't see through you. Your parents weren't glass makers. I thought it was pretty witty. I thought it was just a good honest, hearty, laughing type of jab at her, but she immediately burst into tears. Tears just, just bucketing down her face, and she just ran out of the room crying, wailing. Other classes were looking at her as she went down the hallway, profusely crying because I dared to mention that her parents weren't glass makers, indicating that she was not see-through, that she was not made out of glass. She was standing in the way of the writing that I had to write down, and I thought, well, I'll point this out in a light-hearted manner, that she was in the way of the writing that I had to do on her behalf, only her behalf, and I thought, let's make a joke light-heartedly, that her parents weren't glass makers, indicating that she was not made out of glass. But little did I know that would set her off in such a manner that she broke down and started crying, and we all had a good chuckle about it as we as we were evil teenagers. We, we enjoyed the pain of authority figures, and everyone slapped me on the back and said, Good job, Stark! You really took it to her this time, didn't you? But I didn't feel great. I, I felt confused. Why was she crying? What did I say that set her off? Why would such an inane statement make a teacher cry to the point of leaving the room? Over the last several years, I've been asking myself those questions. I've been thinking to myself, what about this made her cry? Of course, I could never ask her such a question. I, she wouldn't look at me ever again in the same manner. And whatever minor amount of respect we had had faded because of that statement. She doubled down on her hatred. And before I knew it, the school year was over and I never had her as a teacher again. Thus, I never got the chance to talk to her about it. I still wish I could. Maybe that's why I'm making this video. Hopefully if Miss Ganga is watching this video, she could tell me what I said was wrong. I have a theory that maybe her parents were in fact glassmakers and they died in an unfortunate glazing accident. And I do not know this for a fact and I did not know this then, but I feel like that's the case. And it was so insensitive of me to bring these terrible memories to the forefront of her mind, especially in such a harsh environment. She's having to teach a classroom of children who are actively not wanting to be there. They're hot, they're sticky, they're miserable. And then she has some snot-nosed art kid tell her to her face that your parents died, miss. Now move out out of the way of the writing. That is just, it was ghastly of me to do that to her. And sure, I don't know for a fact that her parents were glass makers and they died in an unfortunate glazing accident, but it's, it's the only thing that adds up. It's the only scientific equation in a hypothesis that I can come up with. Maybe you guys have some ideas as to why she did this. Maybe you are Miss Ganga and you're watching this. Leave some comments down below and let me know your thoughts, questions, queries, concerns. And and, and if you are Miss Ganga, please write to me down in the comments below and I'll read what you have to say and I'll take it to heart and I'll make sure that I never, ever, ever, ever make this mistake again. I was mortified. 
I mean, it was admittedly pretty funny for the first five minutes, but the more I thought about it, the more horrified I was. This whole entire affair gave me an epiphany, an arc, because at the beginning of this story, I was very rude and dismissive and selfish and mean and, and, and someone who would bring up past traumas as a weapon. But now I am at this stage in my life in which I have grown I have matured, I have become far more empathetic, far more caring, and it's all because of this one incident. I should really take careful consideration of what I say. Before that, I was a teenager. You say whatever's on your mind, but this event made me realize that words have power, words have meaning behind them, and sure, they may mean something differently to me, but they meant something to her, and they mean something to you. I could be saying something right now in this video that is offending you or making you cry. Maybe, maybe you're crying because your parents were glass makers and died in an unfortunate glazing accident, and me reliving this story from my own past is making you relive events from your own past, and isn't that just unfair of me? But words have power, and the power I want to wield with my words is love. I want to wield the words with, with authority, but something that isn't oppressive. I want to liberate people with my words. I want to make you think, I want to make you feel, I want to make you open up your soul with what I am saying. So, yes. I made a teacher cry in high school to the point in which she never wanted to speak to me again. Yes, I made her cry to the point in which everyone kind of mocked her for the rest of the year and made glass jokes. Yes, I did that, but I deeply regret that decision that I made. I deeply regret the words that I expressed. I am in deep regret about these things, and that's what makes me a human. That's what makes me a caring individual. I feel things, and I'm not afraid to express them, just like she did in that classroom with her tears. She expressed her genuine sadness. Now, here I am expressing my feelings on the events of my teenage years to you. Hopefully, this story inspires you to be better, to do better, to think and say better. Look at those around you, and before you say anything to the people around you, really look at them. Really look at them and think carefully. Does this person look like they will cry at something I say? Because if they are, be careful. Tread lightly. Now, if you look at them and you think to yourself, they can take what I have to say, then say it. Say it with confidence. And if you're wrong, be the big enough person to apologize. Don't mock them. Apologize for your words. So that's the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my high school story about how I made my teacher cry. I'm sure that we've all got a lesson to learn here, and I just am really glad that I got this off of my chest. So make sure to subscribe, like the video, share it around, click the bell as well, leave comments below. Oh my god, there's so many things you've got to do. I feel like I've got to write these on a blackboard for you.